It was by Aaron Ramsdale in the Players' Tribune, covering a lot of different topics. He started off talking about that move to Arsenal and about how excited he was about making that switch, but how everybody else was definitely not excited and how that affected his mood making that move to Arsenal. But then he gets a lot deeper, and it's a fascinating open article talking about the pride that he has in his brother being gay and also how he reacted and his family reacted to the miscarriage of his child after the World Cup. Shaq, before we get into details of some of those things, just overall, I just wanted to, to get what you made of the overall tone of the article. I thought it was an incredible read. I, I really do. And it kind of lends into something we were discussing about Delhi a few weeks ago, mm. uh, just about the humanness of footballers and, and how, despite what we may see on television, um, some of the reports we may read, how... how they, 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 they suffer in, in so many ways, as, as everybody else does. Um, there, there's no buffer to that and, and how they're, they're able to, to cope with it. I, I, I thought, and, and we'll get into to more details, as you say, but everything I've, I've heard from, from Aaron Ramsey, from a goalkeeper who I thought so highly of, I, I've, I've come away from reading that article thinking so much more about the young man he is and the young man he's growing to grow, the young man and goalkeeper. That, that he's growing to be. Uh, as you mentioned, Shaq, it, it, it's what we don't see on the pitch and what's happening behind the scenes. We talked about Deli Ali's interview a, a month ago. Let's talk about the, some of the stuff that Aaron Ramsey brought up, including uh, the miscarriage in his family, saying there are things that go on in our lives that the public has no idea about. And the past year has been an emotional roller coaster for me and my family after the high of climbing to the top of the Premier League table. And going off to my first World Cup, my wife and I found out we were expecting our first child. Mikel gave me a few extra days off after the World Cup, so we went on a brief holiday. It was genuinely the happiest time of our lives. And yeah, there's no easy way to say this, but I feel like it's important that people know on the flight home my wife had a miscarriage. There's really no way that I can describe the pain of that six-hour flight back to London even now. When we got back, I didn't tell many people what happened. Only my family, my teammates, and of course, Mikel. He was fantastic about everything. Even in the middle of the title race, with so much pressure on the club, he asked me if I needed some time off to deal with everything. Mikel went above and beyond to make sure me and my family were OK. What I thought would be interesting to ask you guys in that everybody has drama that's happening off the pitch and everybody deals with it in, in different ways. I'm just intrigued. Shaka, how did, how did you deal with it? Did you consciously switch a switch? Obviously, maybe not the extreme drama of this, but not everybody's lives is perfect going into matches. Did you consciously think, right, now it's time to focus on the game? Uh, no, I, I found the game to be a welcome escape to, to a lot of the things that I may have been dealing with off, off the field. And, and let, me, let me just say, I have never had to deal with anything mm. um, to the magnitude that Aaron Ramsdale had. I, I think on, on, a personal, on a personal level, that is such a blow. Um, I, I'm not sure how I would have dealt with it. So the, the, the closest comparison I can draw is, is during my time at Newcastle, my... my eldest daughter fell ill and had to be hospitalized for, I think she was in hospital for a, a week to 10 days. My, my wife stayed in hospital with her. I would go to training, come to, come to hospital uh, to, to meet them. Um, and, and that went on, as I say, for, for, for that period of time. Playing football was the most welcome distraction I could have asked for. It, it took my mind off of everything that was going on off the field. And, and um, it, it, it served me in, in, in ways that I, I can't describe. And, and oftentimes people talk about my own progression as a professional and when things maybe turned. And I always point, I always point to that incident because it, it hits you. You're forced to recognize what's important in life. Before that, you think, you know, it, it's, it's all about the game and it's all about Saturday and your performances and so much of, of, of your life and so much of your own identity is hinged to what happens on a Saturday, to your performances. And then all of a sudden you're forced to deal with that and you realise that as a, as a person, as a man, as a father, um, life is, 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 is so much bigger and you're able to put the game into perspective and you're able to deal with the highs and lows that come with being a professional footballer are uh, so much better. So I, I, using my own experience, I think Aaron Ramsdale somehow 
is a better person, is a better mm. husband, and will be a better father in, in the long term uh, for it. And, and you start to you start to recognize that in him um, as the article went on. From from our perspective, from our perspective as pundits looking in, again, we, we are being asked to make judgments about people and we really don't know a lot of what they what they're dealing with away from the game. That doesn't make what we say wrong. It, it just makes what we say, uh, it, it, it lacks some of that context, which we aren't privy to, nor should we be privy to. Um, mm. But us and the job that we do are a part of the landscape of, of this game, a part of what has, has driven the popularity of this game. We stand by our opinions. We recognize that we don't know everything that's going on. And we are being asked to make judgments on just the superficial. I, 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 as, as I said a couple of weeks ago, there's a place for that. We recognize that, that, that we aren't privy to all that information. But when players such as Ramsdale, such as, as Delhi a few weeks ago, speaks about their, their own truths and, and, and gives greater context to maybe some of, some of their own struggles, um, you, 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 have to, you have to take a step back, pause, and appreciate, um, again, the, the humanness of, of all that we do. That was a very private moment for Amstel that he's chosen to share. Stevie, you were part of a very public morning when, when Hillsborough happened, of course. Yeah. The whole team were pretty much the face of Liverpool trying to get through it. And you spoke about it in your book, how in the end, no matter how much you try and kind of decompartmentalise everything, inevitably, in the end, it, it gets to you. Yeah, I'd have to say up until then, I can only describe my own personal stuff as me being robotic. Right. I remember in the early 80s, Ronnie Moran, when the, I wasn't a regular in the team and the team was having a bit of a, a struggle. You know, if we lost three games, we would have a big meeting, there'd be some. And it was made very clear, particularly from Ronnie, that when you come through that door, you leave what's going on at home, good or bad, behind. And it's, you concentrate on doing what you've got to do here. And it's the same, you know. When you go home, you can't be taking your work home with you, right. but it's the very same according to the way we, certainly the way I spent that decade thinking that regardless of what was going on at home or with your family out with your own, your own little group, it was shoved aside because that's what you did. Now, the modern game term, sometimes I hate the sound of it, but the modern game likes to know this stuff. They like to hear about it. It's, it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to open up and talk about it. Whereas that era I played it... It was it, about bearing it. It was about, it was about you get on with it, mm. you figure it out. If you need any help, then we'll try and help you. But when you come through that door, you don't bring it in the door. Right. As I said, that's how I dealt, dealt with it. Robotic, up until what you were talking about, that... That blew the roof off, basically. Yeah, I, I had the experience. So I was playing for Coventry at the time. It was over Christmas, and we had to stay away at hotel. And um, my wife had a miscarriage um, before a game against Wimbledon. Coventry were playing Wimbledon. And I phoned up Terry Butcher, who was the manager. I said, I'm going to come and play, but can I have two days off afterwards? He said, of course you can. So, and I had a very good game and thoroughly enjoyed it. But... I then had to go home and sure. deal with it. So I could stop what was going on at home and perform. I couldn't do it the other way around. So when you played badly, I would take that home with me. Right. And my parents jokingly would always say, what happened to you? When you before you were a footballer, you were a lovely bloke. But since you've been a footballer, <laughs> yeah. you're moody. And I, and I said, it all depends on how I've played or what I think has gone on on the day, because I can never let it go. Right. Until I play well the next time, that's always, why didn't I do this? Why did I do that? Why didn't I make that challenge? Or why didn't I make that pass? I couldn't let it go. So uh, night after night, I wouldn't sleep until I had that good game again. Really, Robert? And that's, that's, that's the mental. So, and there's probably players all around the country yes. who are exactly the same, yeah. but you never talked about it in our day. Right. Now, players are willing to do it, and, and fair play to them. Yeah, indeed. Aaron Ramsby, uh, then, Aaron Ramsdale, sorry, then talking 
about his family as well, saying, my brother is gay and he's lived his life in an open, authentic way since he went off to school. I'm so proud to say he's my brother. I haven't talked about it before, but with everything going on in football right now, I thought it was important to mention. Over the years, I've probably bit my tongue a few too many times, both in dressing rooms and on social media, whenever I hear homophobic comics or stupid things being said. And I think maybe my brother has done the same, thinking it would make my life easier. Uh, again, Shaka, this is something that he doesn't have to come out and say. And he knows that he's opening the door to so much abuse from the terraces because we know what a small, mm -hmm. small percentage of fans can be like. But an extraordinarily... Is brave the right word, word to use here? Um, yes, I, I, I do. I, I think um, I'll, use, I'll say brave and I'll say responsible. And, and there are a couple of things that he says in the article that I think lead into this. Um, one is, is he, he, he describes social media or Twitter, at the very least, as, as being a, a toxic place. And I, I think, I, I think that that's the truth. And, and, and most of our experiences are exactly that. Um, so you cannot take what people say to you on, on social media, um, you, you can't take it on board. You, you, can't, you can't give it the, the validity that, th that, that those toxic people are looking for. I think um, it also in, in talking about criticism from, from the media when he first joined, um, I, I don't know about the two, the, the, the twice that he had been relegated, is he, he recognised that there's only one opinion that, that truly counts. And that's something that certainly we as players, and, and, and both Stevie and Robbo would, I'm sure, back me up on this. There's only one opinion that, that counts in the game. And, and that's the managers. So what mm. people are saying on television and what people are saying on social media really should not have any kind of an impact on you. And, and so he, he recognises that. And then he also recognised that he earned a platform by being the goalkeeper that he is that has allowed him to speak about so many of society's issues. And I, I, I think, again, that's why I use the word responsibility, because this is a game that welcomes all. This is a game that's enjoyed by every single person, mad woman or child, regardless of how you love or how you worship, all are welcomed into football terraces. At times, they may not feel welcomed. And I think that is the challenge, that those people from other communities aren't always made to feel welcome. But this, is, this really is the world's game, and this is Anne Ramsdale using this platform. Now, I, I also hasten to add that there are many, and I'm sure he'll find that, who feel differently, who will package this as, well, football isn't the place to, to be having these discussions. Absolutely it is. And I will say this to those who offer that as a criticism. If you have an issue with Aaron Ramsdale using his platform in the manner that he is, there is one really simple solution. Go out onto the training ground, get really good, and become Arsenal's goalkeeper. And then you can use that platform to do whatever you want. If you aren't prepared to do that, then let Aaron Ramsdale do with, with his platform exactly as he pleases. If you aren't prepared to do that, put your phone down and just distance yourself from the hate of a young man who's seen more than most of us and is dealing with, that, dealing with it in a way that most of us simply can't or simply won't. I'll be, I'll be shocked if football crowds do what they used to do, because today everybody's more accepting of this stuff. You feel there's more self-policing, yeah, within the crowd? Absolutely. The majority... You can't, you can't take any notice of social media, Twitter and all these things, because it's, you know, it's, pe it's, it's, it's people hiding behind a screen. But what used to happen back in Robo in, in our day was people would use stuff like that to shout at you. You know, going for a throw on. Sure. A, a, a London club where I was playing at, my dad was in a coma. I got it the whole game, one half of the game. Every time the ball went out, I had to go and get the ball and I got it rammed down my throat laughing and all kinds of stuff. You don't... Your football supporter today doesn't act like that. It's full of kids, women, children... Sensible people, the majority are good people that go to football games, particularly in the Premier League. 
So as far as the football world and the football supporters, they're just going to look at this and have sympathy for Ramsdale. It's all these idiots on social media, and as Shaka said, turn your phone off. Just, Steve, I didn't know that story before. How do you cope with that? Well, you do it. You just get on with your job? You do it. Because that, you, you as, do as, it. as much as you want to get on with your job, your dad's in a coma, you've got thousands of fans shouting it. Like, how you, do you deal with that? You find a way of switching off and, and concentrating on what you've got to do. And then you get your moment and you have your... You have your whatever right. to, to go in the room on your own and think about it and yeah. swear at them. And, yeah. But no, you don't, you don't, you don't react. You, you get on with it, you concentrate, you don't show anything. I'm not sure that football crowds have changed that much. Right. You know, I watched a lot. So. I've been to. There, there I've been is, to there's a lot. always a minority, isn't there? There's always going to be. There's always going to be. I tell you what, you go to any football ground and watch any football game on the TV. Yeah. When the ball goes to the crowd and a player goes to take a corner, just oh. watch. Look at the <laughs> 20 people behind him right. who are all giving him abuse, dogs abuse. Right. You know, so I don't think it's changed. See, I've sat in stands and I'm, I'm listening to what people are saying. It right. hasn't changed at all. You know, there's still the same people still doing it. Football brings out the worst in people when they go to a football match. I've seen people that are an abs a normal people in their in day to day life, good jobs. They go to a football game and they think it's okay to shout and abuse anybody and anything they want. It's it's, it's outrageous. Jack, I, I think to Robbo's point, I think football grounds are changing. They haven't changed fully yet in a way. I, I think that we all would love to see it. But I, I think the progress is slow. And, and um, just given, given a lot of the work that I do with Shuri Red Card, I'm, I'm exposed to, to so much of that. Um, I, I, I speak to a group called Stand Up to Racism. Um, and and uh, uh, Jacks Against Racism uh, is a group based in, in, in South Wales, made up of, of Cardiff and Swansea fans. I know anybody who knows anything about that derby, I don't think there's a more kind of violent... Or you know, or, or, or almost toxic um, derby than, than 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 that. But both sets of fans, er, before every game between Swansea and Cardiff, come together to to to, to talk about about the issues, to, to talk about uh, standing up to, to some of that some of that distasteful chanting that that you still hear in in, in, in grounds. The last time I was um, I, I spoke with them, one one of one of the the fans was was talking about taking his granddaughter uh, to, to, to one of the games. And he said, a few rows ahead of him, there was this man that was just shouting uh, abuse at, at the black players on the field, using uh, a lot of racist language, and, and nobody said anything. And he was deathly scared because he's, he's a bit older now. He's there with his young granddaughter. And eventually he had enough, and he shouted something at, at, at this man, and with that, everybody around him started to condemn that racist fan and all that he was seeing. And I think that leans into what Rob was saying around mob mentality. Football doesn't bring out the worst in, in, in people. It's that mob mentality that brings out the worst in people. If you feel that me being racist, I'm being, I'm being supported by those around me in that, football, in that football stadium to show racist abuse, to show any kind of abuse, you, you, you will continue to, to, to amplify that, that behavior. If you bring out, if you bring, bring out the goodness in, in who football fans are and there are people around you who feel the same, you will get that equal response from those around you. And I think that's what football fans are slowly but surely recognizing and leaning into, that there are, the day of the vocal majority is now gone that the majority are now willing to speak up because they recognize that support, they recognize that mob, mob mentality around bringing goodness and a certain, a certain standard to, to what football stadiums now look like. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.